Hello friends, uh, welcome once again to all our non-law medical videos. I'm glad you are all a part of this. Today um, we will be talking about congenital anomalies of kidney and urinary tract. This topic is important uh, not only for pediatricians but even for other nephrologists because these kids when they grow they tend to develop or are more prone to have a chronic kidney disease and end-stage renal disease. As a pediatrician, these are one of the common, uh, one of the common congenital anomalies that they come across. It's commonly abbreviated as CACUT, that is C-A-K-U-T, congenital anomalies of kidney and urinary tract. Before we go into the details of what are these different anomalies and how they develop and how they present, we should understand the embryology behind the kidney development. And this holds true for anything in medicine to really understand how the disease process evolves. And you have to go back to the basics of it. So let's look into the embryology of the human development and this video will just talk about the human kidney embryology. As you know, during the third week of the gestation, epiblast cells surrounding the primitive streak, which is a groove along the longitudinal midline axis of the human embryo, migrate to form the definitive endoderm and the intraembryonic mesoderm. The primitive groove, which goes on to form the notochord, the mesoderm cells aggregate on either side of this notochord. The one which are very close to the notochord are called as paraxial mesoderm from which cartilage, skeletal muscles and dermis is formed. The one which is the farthest is the lateral plate of the mesoderm from which you see the circulatory system and body cavities are formed. The intermediate mesoderm is the place from where kidneys and parts of the gonads and the male genital duct system is formed. The early development of human kidney can be divided into three sets of excretory organs. The first is called pronephric kidney, the second is mesonephric kidney, and third is metanephric kidney, which is the adult kidney. The pronephric kidney is the earliest of all. Its development starts at the end of the third week of the gestation, as demonstrated in some of the mouse studies. Signals from the surface ectoderm induces cells in the intermediate mesoderm to differentiate into the nephric duct. The pronephros is formed from five to seven pairs of the segments of the intermediate mesoderm, which then condenses to form the tubular vesicles. The proximal ends of these tubules open into the coelom, which is the cavity, and the distal end joins to form the pronephric ducts. The the pronephrose is a rudimentary and never forms any functional nephrons, but it's very crucial to go through this stage for a normal kidney development. Now the second stage is the mesonephric kidney and its development starts by around fourth week of the gestation. Nearly 40 mesonephric tubules are formed from the cervical to the sacral region. Those in the cervical region involutes, but those in the sacral region continues to grow. The medial aspect of these, mesoneph uh, these tubules expands and forms what is called as Bowman's capsule. 
the blood vessels from the dorsal aspect are getting into that expanded portion and invades into the Bowman's capsule forming the glomerulus and this structure becomes the renal corpuscle. The lateral end of these tubules join to form a tube called as mesonephric tubule or mesonephric duct. The lower end of this mesonephric duct is opening into the cloaca. If you look in the adults, this part is represented by the trigone of the bladder. In the presence of the testosterone, this mesonephric duct goes on to become efferent ducts of the epididymis as the epididymis itself, the vas difference, the seminal vesicles. and the prostate. In the absence of this testosterone, which is in the females, this mesonephric duct just involutes. Now coming to the third phase, which is the metanephric kidney or the adult kidney. This starts by around fifth week of the gestation. So you can see that each phase is separated by around one to two weeks. There are two important things that are needed for formation of the metanephric kidney. One is this growth which you see at the lower end of the mesonephric duct which starts when the mesonephric stage of the kidney is going on. And that is called as ureteric bud. So that's number one. Number two is a collection of the cells in the mesoderm or you can call it as a mass of the cells in the mesoderm which is called as metanephric mesenchyme or metanephric blastema. What is important is that there is a reciprocal interactive growth between ureteric bud and the metanephric mesenchyme for the complete development of the human kidney. Here is another representation and further process how kidney and the functional unit of the kidney which is nephron is formed. So this is the nef um, ureteric bud which is now growing and then branching. The number of branches that the ureteric bud undergoes leads to the number of nephron formation. So each adult kidney has one to three million nephrons so you imagine that ureteric bud undergoes that many times of branching. The ureteric bud gives rise to collecting ducts, then further down which is chalysis, renal pelvis and the ureter. The metanephric mesenchyme is invaded by the collecting ducts from the ureteric bud provides signal to the growth of the metanephric mesenchyme. Hence, this is called as a reciprocal inductive interaction or the growth because ureteric bud provides signals to the metanephric mesenchyme to grow and metanephric mesenchyme gives signals to the ureteric bud to branch. This metanephric mesenchyme now starts to undergo changes which is from a comma shape to a S shaped to a convoluted tubules and this gives rise to distal convoluted tubule loops of Henle proximal convoluted tubule the glomerulus and then this is invaded by the blood vessels forming the renal corpuscle. The connection between this collecting duct and the distal convoluted tubule happens by around 10th week of the gestation. On day 32 the ureteric bud penetrates the intermediate mesoderm and that's an important event that we should remember. So, so far we know that we need two things in adult kidney for formation which is metanephric mesenchyme which is just a collection of the cells and ureteric bud which is a growth coming out from the mesonephric duct. There is a reciprocal interaction that happens between these two and leads to the formation of a million nephrons. This is another 
pictorial demonstration of the same thing that happens a uretric bud invading the metanephric mesenchyme growth of the metanephric mesenchyme happens branching happens forming million nephrons as i said that there is a reciprocal inductive interaction that happens between those two there is involvement of lot of lot of growth factors and genes and this is just a representation of some of those genes how they are involved and defect in any of these genes leads to various different manifestations and diseases of the kidney so what are the uniqueness of the renal development and you should remember this and very important and high yield number one it's a more branching morphogenesis what does it mean that the, when the growth of the kidneys happen it happens with branching into million different nephrons there are two other organs which undergo the similar branching morphogenesis one is lung and the other one is salivary glands number two inductive inter tissue interaction happens between the uretric bud and the metanephric mesenchyme number three there is migration that happens all this process which i just explained to you is going on in the sacral area and as the time goes on in the embryo by third week of the gestation th sorry not third week third in the third trimester of the gestation the kidneys would have migrated to their normal position unclear reason why this happens but hypothesis is differential growth of the sacrum and the abdominal cavity pulls these kidneys up and the last thing is the mesenchymal to the epithelial transformation thank you we'll continue further